Listen, Stories of Cancer and Resilience is a co-production of Gilda's Club Twin Cities, a cancer support community, and Twin Cities PBS. The Listen Project really began as a dream, a, a literal dream. <laughs> I was running so many different types of support groups at the time, loss groups, family and friends groups, living with cancer groups. And for some reason that week, there was a common theme that people just don't get it. People who haven't been impacted by cancer aren't really understanding the effects that cancer has on everything from career to our sense of identity to our relationships. And in my dream, people were using modern art and movement to demonstrate cancer's impact on our lives. And I woke up the next morning and I thought, this dream has to come to life. This was amazing. Um, and that's really how Listen began. You know, I wasn't supposed to be here. Or should I say, I never imagined I would be here. I wish desperately that I could change it, but I cannot. So here I am facing this with no preparation, ad-libbing my premature demise. And how can that be? Shouldn't I have not gotten a memo, a warning, anything telling me what to expect? Back to the top. Let's remember where these movements came from. Suzanne Costello is the co-artistic director of Stuart Pimsler Dance and Theater, and she was the person who answered the phone the day that I called and said, hey, I had this dream, and I would really um, like to know if you would be interested in partnering with us and collaborating to bring this dream to life. That's it. So let's just do another run. And I just happened to be in the office when Allie called, and she started telling me that she'd seen our work some number of years ago and was very interested in having us do a performative project with Gilda's Club. And I was like, yep, yeah, let's do this. Gilda's Club is a cancer support community, and it's really the legacy of Saturday Night Live comedian Gilda Radner. It was formed so that nobody would face cancer alone. Well, Gilda Radner, it depends on your generation, right? I loved her. She's Rosanna Rosanna Dana. I mean, she's like this wacky comedian, and at the height of her career, she's diagnosed with cancer and she feels in the middle of Manhattan, like she's by herself. I think that's pretty profound. What really makes Gilda's Club unique is the sense of community. This is non-clinical, it's non-medical. This is really a place where people can come and connect. People living with a diagnosis, family members, friends, children, anybody who's been impacted by cancer can come and have a place where they really can connect with others who truly get what that cancer experience is like. I found out about Gilda's Club after I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in February of 2015. I learned about Gilda's Club actually through my wife. I first heard about Gilda's Club uh, from an article in the newspaper, so that when my daughter then was diagnosed, I kind of knew what was going on. Gilda's Club, I feel like, has just been a blessing for us. They offer so many different services, completely free of charge. Support groups for people with cancer and their caregivers. They have a craft room, which my daughter loves. There's art therapy, there's yoga, there's a teen room, there's the children's room. Speakers and programming. They have a giant kitchen where they do cooking classes. Having a place where you can come and talk to other people who are experiencing the same things is really amazing. And then also having childcare at the same time is also amazing. I came through the Red Doors and that I, you, you come and you stay. That's, that's what the Red Doors do. As a pediatric oncologist, I saw very early on that cancer care isn't just the medical intervention. People who are cared for psychologically and socially have fewer other stressors that complicate their experience. 
if we do something to relieve that stress, then it's much easier for them to pay attention to medication schedules, appointments, things like that. Um, and if the rest of their life is supported in some way or given some kind of order, we really create better outcomes. I think Gilda's Club has been able to construct an excellent program around those things. <laughs> there you go, okay? So straight this attitude up, okay? The Listen Project is really a collaboration between Gilda's Club and Stuart Pimsler Dance and Theater to tell the stories about cancer through movement, music, and voice. We invited Stuart Pimsler in to come and learn about our communities, to listen to our stories. And through the process of listening, Suzanne was able to draw out some common themes and begin to choreograph those themes and really put our stories into movement. To your left, perfect, okay. I didn't know what to expect when I first started. I came to the first listen event that they had just to find out what it was all about and I kept coming and I kept coming and the next thing I knew I was standing on the stage in a spotlight giving a monologue. How I got there I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> when I was in college I took modern dance classes as my sort of arts requirement and I was terrible at it. The experience was in a way a lot like that the cancer experienced a lot of trust and just moving one foot in front of the other, just getting through another day or another rehearsal and not knowing what it's going to be like in the end. I was volunteering one day and I decided I'm just gonna saunter down the hallway and pop into one of the practices and thought, I think I've landed on the moon. I knew nothing about this singing stuff, this humming, <laughs> this artistic dance movements. I'm not a dancer, still am not a dancer, but they got me moving, I have to say. <laughs> All right, let's try this whole thing. I've been working in the field of community inclusive work for over 30 years, and our particular um, focus on arts and healthcare began in 1992, and Gilda's project is right in step with that focus that we have been very committed to. What do you find you've been listening to? in the broadest sense of the word. I wanted first and foremost to just listen to people's stories. Whether these are people living with cancer, people who've lost somebody to cancer, somebody who has been diagnosed and has quote unquote survived cancer, but mostly people said people don't get it. I mean, people who aren't here with us in this experience don't get it. A lot of people say cancer's the look good disease because you look great on the outside, but inside you might feel like the scrambled eggs you had for breakfast. <laughs> There she goes. That's it. Good. I was interested in the Listen Project and the dance piece in particular. I grew up dancing and then I brought my daughter with. She is also a dancer and so she decided to participate as well. And that's the cue. There you go. I felt like I could maybe speak a lot about all the different roles um, and the ways that I've cancer has touched my life. I was diagnosed with acute lymphocytic leukemia when I was four, and I've worked in pediatric oncology and adult cancer research as a research nurse. And that's kind of been my life's work because of my childhood experiences with cancer. And then last spring, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. And since it's already spread to my bones, um, it is not curable. For me, it's been important that I work on it with my daughter, and that part has been really meaningful to me, that it's something that we've been able to do and share together. When your doctor says to you, you know, your life is now going to be measured in years rather than decades, um, it's a terrifying, terrifying moment. Last year, July 17th, I was, uh, diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. In terms of prognosis, it's the likelihood of having three years is good. The likelihood of having five years is 10%. It's really easy for people who don't have that much experience with people who are living with cancer to sort of, you know, assume that it's being on a deathbed or, oh, it's just over or, you know, 
And I think that the experience of actually being in my situation is is not like that, you know? And I live each day and I get up with my kids and I have a beautiful morning and sometimes it's an exhausting morning and that's something that the Listen Project really helps express is that it's not just baldness and peeling over, you know, there's, there's still life, uh, even when you know that there's not necessarily that much of it. Everybody came to this project with a different interest and ability. We have some folks who are in active treatment currently going through chemotherapy radiation. We also have some individuals who are post-treatment and many plus year survivors. The LISTEN project offered the opportunity to reconnect me as a breast cancer survivor with my body that I had left kind of sitting in the corner in order to survive the experience of losing my breasts, my ovaries, gaining weight. I had to see what it could be and maybe reclaim some of what it means to be a woman and a human. I was diagnosed with a grade three malignant brain tumor. And at that time, I was having difficulty matching up the top piece and the bottom piece of a sandwich. And so because of these practices with the repetition, the repetition, and of course the loving nudges of my fellow participants, no, Elaine, it's your turn. No, this way, that way. All of a sudden I was moving my body, practicing my memory. There were a few mornings where my body just said, oh, I'm hurting too much, I'm too tired. But my mind said, just get there. Just, just get there and then you can sit and watch and just getting out the door and being in the synergy of the others that are going through similar, even though they're personal journeys, but similar circumstances, that just made my day and my week. Early in rehearsals, I felt some of my memories coming back. I felt the anxiety, I felt the fear, I felt the metallic taste of chemo, all of that was present. And then I felt graceful for a little while. And that was incredibly empowering. Creativity, art, it causes us to pause and to reflect on our lives in ways that we might not normally. We can become so consumed with words sometimes that we can even fool ourselves into telling our story the only way we've ever told it. So by telling our story in a different way, in a different modality, whether it's visual arts, movement, music, it does cause us to pause and become mindful and to really reflect on what is my story? How can I tell it? Is there part of my story that I want to tell differently? I hope that people hear and see the people apart from the cancer experience. It's not like cancer is a stamp that makes everybody the same. This project is to give voice to these people's stories. When we hear a personal story, we then never think about that thing the same way again. Steve's monologue is the first in the show, and it was staged in the balcony. So spatially, there's already a division be between the performers and the, and the audience. So here we are, or should I say, we are here and you are there. 
But it could easily be the reverse. This thing that we share could, might, in time, or even now, impact you. So let's all take a breath. I was looking at what does that look like? You're there and we're here. And it could be the reverse. And I just had people start to move to different places in the chairs as a movement metaphor for I could be there and you could be here. And from that, the monologue continues. As it goes on, it becomes more personal and more about his story. So for now, I write and rewrite my goodbyes. I kiss and hold the ones I love probably more than they want. And I soak in the beauty and wonder of the life I live until it slips away. I try to imagine it won't for now. Pretty incredible person to be able to put himself on stage and talk so intimately about what it looks like to really look death in its eyes. You know, Suzanne created this piece based on listening to us, and it's incredible how well it expresses through movement this feeling that you can't really express through words. Suzanne had us all sort of develop a motion that we felt kind of expressed something about us that was separate from cancer. You know, say, I love to fish, or I love to sew, or I love my children. So my movement it is actually the busy movement, they call it, because that's kind of my life as a mom and a nurse. My daughter's movement is kind of more laid back, moving backwards. There are some elements that are really, really sad and painful to watch and listen to. And then there are other elements which are really beautiful. There's a sort of almost ballroom dancing section. That image came from one of the participants talked about how embracing cancer as a dance partner. Like you're dancing in a ballroom dance with a partner, and, but then suddenly something changes and suddenly you're on your own. And it's really beautiful, and it's really kind of uh, upbeat in a sense. It's been nice to see my daughter grow and be outside of her shell a little bit and be willing to interact with the other members of the company or being in a group that's not with her mother. We all come together in this part of the piece where we are just walking across the stage, but doing it in a, in a sense where we're all together and um, where it's, it's sort of expressing the kind of journey that we're on. I had asked each of them to add a detail of red to their costumes. I wanted it to acknowledge that cancer is the thing they all share and this would be sort of a, an emblem of that, a symbol of that. But it's, again, just a part. Cancer affects anybody and everybody. It doesn't ask for your birth certificate or your race or your age or if you just got married or just had a child. It attaches to anyone indiscriminately. And yet, it, it's the great unifier. sort of experiencing pain and suffering and loss together. And the fact that we can share that and that we can connect through that is, is really beautiful, but it's still really sad that we have to. And I think that that is sort of the emotional center of the whole show. I mean, one of the things that I have always loved about modern dance is that it expresses ideas without the sort of clumsiness of words. 
there's something about seeing motion and connection between people that come to have their, a sort of meaning throughout the, the performance and, and, and really capture um, feelings, emotions in, in a way that you can't necessarily in words. That's what's really exciting about being in it, I think, is, is thinking of how the audience can really engage with that. That performance was really a celebration, stating we're here, we're alive, we're contributing. It was such a beautiful start of the conversation. What my hope is that people will not hesitate in having some dialogue with us and actually reaching out and just saying, hey, would you like to go for coffee or can I drive you to an appointment or whatever it is that they might feel comfortable and already may be thinking of doing, that they will have a little bit more permission to reach out and, and touch that other person. I've always been a pretty firm believer that the meaning that we have is what we create. And so I think it's not necessarily hope that I look for as much as meaning, because that's what, that's what you can have now. And hope is this kind of like ephemeral in the future, you know, what are things going to be? Whereas meaning is something that you find and you create with your community and your friends and your family, and you really share those experiences and those those are there, those are, I mean, they're not tangible, but they are part of who you are. When I think about my kids, for example, having a wonderful moment with my daughter, who, who's one and a half, and she probably won't remember it, um, but it's still part of who she is, and it is something that happened and that existed and had meaning and has meaning. And I think for me being part of the Listen Project is one of those things where it's like, this is an experience that I can have and that I can be a part of and that I can share and that's meaningful. Gilda Radner said, cancer gave me membership into an elite club I'd rather not belong to. And whenever I say that to members in new member meetings here, people agree, they get it. It is the club that nobody wants to belong to, but boy, we're so grateful to have it because when cancer does come into your life, you just want to be understood. It's been a year since we performed the Listen Project, and there have been so many changes with, with the performers who participated. Uh, we've had several members who've had reoccurrences of their cancer. We've had individuals who have had new family members diagnosed. Steve Ashcroft died about a month and a half after our performance. We wish Steve could be here. We miss him tremendously. He was an important part of our community but his family is. So Anna comes here, her kids come here. <laughs> Having lost Steve, I feel like part of me is gone. And I think this last year has been a lot about figuring out what my path is now without him. So having a place like Gilda's is so essential because it keeps you from feeling alone out in that world. After Steve died, Anna transitioned into my Living With Loss group, and I think the joy comes from witnessing people's journey from grief into being able to find uh, skills to cope and build resilience into their life and know that there is possibility and hope to move forward. And so to watch Anna and her kids continue to grow and move forward it doesn't mean that the loss isn't there. It just means that life is different. But they're doing it. No one should face cancer alone. I can't tell you how important it is to find and engage with people. It means everything. I think every person you meet or hear about gives you a little more hope. 
we're not walking in each other's shoes. We're walking side by side on a similar path. And there's something that is so sustaining about that. That's that connection, that belonging that as humans we strive to reach. That's what gives us meaning and purpose. So the sense of community is strong, it's binding, it's the foundation, it's the everything. Listen, Stories of Cancer and Resilience is a co-production of Gilda's Club Twin Cities, a cancer support community, and Twin Cities PBS. This program is made possible by the state's Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota, and generous funding from the Beezy and Pewterbaugh Family and Friends and the Charlson Foundation.